a little black history. It was 13 of us, eight boys and five girls. The girls worked in the house and daddy took us outside and showed us things that a man is supposed to do. When the sun start going down, do you know what you were to do without telling you again? Because you knew what was coming if you didn't get to the job. You would get a licking, and I'm not talking about Atomic's watch, and keep on ticking. But we learned. Now the young folks, young people that are in here, listen to me. Listen to your parents. Some of your parents know what I am talking about. You have black history in the classroom, but we have black history not set aside one day, but every day. Black history. We came from a long ways. With the mercy and grace of God, we got a long ways to go. But I'm saying that now, the young people, you think that you have it made. Learn all that you can learn. Now you got all of these technologies. You got Snap, Jacqueline, and Pop. <laughs> and you don't know which time it's going to pop. <laughs> learn all you can learn. Stay in school. Don't stay in trouble. Those fences that are made was not made for you all. Stay out of them. If you build your house, then you can put a fence around it. But stay out of the other fence. I'm not preaching yet. But I want you all to know it's sad that what's going on in today's society taking the word out of the prayer out of church, prayer out of school. It's a sad situation. We were in school. We had to learn a different Bible verse every day when we went into school. Mine was honor your father and your mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Listen to what I'm saying. Now you've got lights you can click the switch back then you had a chain to pull and if you went to see your little girlfriend when that time come the old man or uh, the woman come in whoop, whoop, that mean it's time for you to get up and get out of here <laughs> now they'll stand all day and all night that's the trouble that's coming in. Now you've got running water. We had running water back then. You know what a well is? <laughs> I went out to the well and drew it up and ran to the house with it. <laughs> running water. You haven't got it made. Don't forget where you come from. My, I will be coming from, let me put my specs on, that means when you begin to thank Luke, going to speak in about the lost sheep, I'm not going to speak about that, the lost corn, but I like to speak a little bit about the man, the lost son, called a prodigal son. And it reads as us. And he said a certain man had two sons. And the younger one of them said unto his father, 
Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided them unto him his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered together all of his goods and took his journey unto a far country. And there wasted his substance with rotten living. And when he had spent, there arose a mighty ferment in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of a country. And he sent him into the field to feed the swines. I'm going to stop there. The question is, right now, do you all, younger people, know what a swine is? You don't have to ask, but I'm glad you did. A swine is a, you call him a pig when he's little. And as you feed him, he gets larger. Then he began to be a hog. Now, I'm not calling nobody in here a hog. But he began to be a hog. He sent this young man out into that field to feed the swine. Now, another country, that means it was a different place rather than where he was at, and they didn't believe in certain things. But he had to do something because he had spent all of his money routing. Now, my mind, I looked it up once, but routing is when you think you've got it and you started giving it away and ain't nothing coming in. Young people today, you get out and you having fun and spending your money and having a good time, you think. But when that money began to look funny, then your friends began to be running. It's a difference. Back when we came along, we were taught the man took care of everything around the house and with getting the house. Now, the young people is you get your half and I get my half. And it's a lot of homes, houses, apartments broken up because one didn't have his half. The men took care of the house, the whole family. It's messed up. Don't forget where you came from. But the young man, he was out there having fun until his money run out. Then his friends left him. The same way it is today. Watch what you're doing. The Bible tells you watch as well as you pray. Somebody might slip up on you. But the young man didn't have nothing and he was hungry and didn't anybody, no man gave him nothing to eat. So he ended up, like I was telling the minister in the room, we raised wheat, my dad did, wheat, corn, oats. He cut it to the mill and had it ground, the wheat for the flour. There's husk on wheat, what you call husk. On corn, oats, he would bring it back home and feed it to the swine. This young man didn't have anything to eat. So he had to eat something to survive. He ended up eating part of the husks that the swines did eat. You just, just picture your mind. You out somewhere, have nothing to eat. 
what would you do in order to survive? But see, in the meantime, God will do things when you get what my dad called big-headed. God will do things to small that head down. So God was with this young man. He was with him. He ended up eating the crust. It's a bad thing. Now a hog will start out, not a hog, but a pig, start out making what you call a mud hole when you put him in a pen. And as that mud, that hole gets bigger, the hog began to get bigger, and he can make a must, a real mess. And I'm going to also put in a wash. You know what a wash is, a little thing fly around? But if he stings you, he hurts you. You'll see a wash in a nest, a little bitty. You say, well, I'll get it later. As Boniface said, you better nip it in the bud then. Because if you leave it up there, a day or two later, it's another wall stuck on it. And a day or two later, it's another wall stuck on that. And then you're going to try to knock it down. A wall's going to sting you. So it is within the church. We've got some yellow jackets swarming around sometime in the church. And if you don't get rid of them, they're going to sting you. But this young man, he began to think. Says, I wonder about my father at home. He had plenty. I wonder how many sermons that he had. They have plenty of food. They, and here I am hungry. God will bring you back. And I should have told you what my text was, that time will bring you home. Time is involved in everything that we do. A time to sleep, time to get up, time to eat, a time in everything that we're involved in. <coughs> and it's going to be a time when God's going to call us on in. So the young man was just wondering, how many servants have his father have plenty to eat? And here I am with nothing. He says, I believe that I will go back home. And I will tell my father that I'm sorry that I have sinned against heaven and against you. He says, and I. So he went on back home and no doubt his father knew all along that he would be back. It tells us to train up a child that he should go. And when he gets up, he may depart from you, but he will come back home. That's why I said, young people, listen to your parent. Whatever your parents say, remember it. Remember it. And it's going to help you along the way. So no doubt the father came and went out. He had plenty, spot of land, cows, and this and that. No doubt the man went out every day and looked across the field the way the sun went. And he went one day and looked out, and he thought he seed someone coming. And he kept looking, and the sun was beginning to get closer. And he said to himself, no doubt, that looks like my son, the way that he walks. You know, yourself, a lot of time, people tell you, you young people, you look like your daddy. Or you look like your mama. That's a good thing. Stay that way. So the man see them coming. <coughs> you excuse me. And as he got closer, he said to himself, that is my son. And he ran out and he met his son. The Bible said he fell down on his son. 
neck and he kissed him. That's how glad he was to see him. See, God knew that he was going to send him back. He's got a plan for you and a plan for me. My dad used to say, don't never forget where you came from. Because don't never forget the bridge that you cross, or you might have to go back across it. So the man run and got his son and carried him on down to the house there. And he called his sermon out. He says, I want you to go out into that pasture there where I've got those young cows. And he said, I don't want you to get that poor one. I want you to get the biggest, fattest one that you can get. And I want you to kill him. He said, we're going to have a time here today. We're going to eat, and we're going to be merry. You know, these days when we are eating and marrying, you got some music out there. And somebody going to get to dancing while they're eating in order to shake some of that down that they're eating so they can eat some more. Said, we're going to eat and we're going to be merry. So they got to eat. And the son that was there was still out in the field. And he began to hear music. And he called one of the servants and said, what's going on there? The servant said, your brother is at home. The son got mad. And I'm telling you today, the same thing today. If you have a little man, a house, and you got children, you better write you a piece of paper. Have it written up. And they, and they said, well, have it notarized. And sometimes that ain't no good, the way things are going now. They'll take that. But it would be one of the biggest arguments over home. I was supposed to get this, and I was to get that. And some of them have not did nothing for their parents. I'm telling you, when you get old, I'm a little great, but not that old. But when you get old and put your children, I'm not making life. It's good that you see for your children to get the best learning that they can get. The where they can move and get somewhere and still that's not enough. But when you get old, your children get to where they can get out and get married. And the next place for you all, for me, myself too, if it's no mind. You got to go to a nursing home. You didn't put them, you didn't scuffle, put them through college. Be a destiny. You're done without. In order for them to get good. And they'll put you there, and sometimes some of them won't even go back and have checked on you. It's not in the sermon, but I'm telling you. The man told the son. The oldest servant says, I want you to go in there and in that box that I've got. You just imagine what kind of home that he had, different from what we've got now. He says, I want you to get a ring and put on his finger. And says, that's not all. I want you to bring the best robe. Now you can imagine how the robe was. Probably just a long shirt, but he said it was a robe. Go and put him on him. And he says, I want you to go in there and look in that closet, probably another box, and get a pair of shoes. Now, I don't know where it was Flo Shines or Stacey Adams. <laughs> they got all kind of names now. You don't know which is which. And all of them looks the same. He said, get a pair of shoes. No doubt they were old strap shoes with a strap on them called flip-flops. And put on his feet. 
said, my son is at home at last. I thought he was dead. I thought he was lost. But now he is found. And then the older son later on had a talk with his dad. He wouldn't even come to the house or come in the house. The same thing is going on in today's society. I went to a film this past Monday. The family was on the front seat back. Part of the family, the main family. And then later on, the family come in, which was about four. They got up off the front seat and moved back about two seats from the front. It's a sad thing when you see stuff like that. God created all of us. He said he would supply all of our needs. You got to ask. You got to pray. And I'm saying to you all today, keep praying. They had breaking news. It's been breaking news all day and all night. And if you tried to stay up and look at it, you wouldn't get no sleep. <laughs> all day and all night, breaking news. The same thing over and over and over and over. Why not just put it on the film and show it? <laughs> or tape or something. Breaking news. But I'm telling you here today, God has it. The news hasn't been broke yet. Look at what God's doing. I'm not making light, but look at the floods and the tornadoes, earthquakes, fires. What did he say? It wouldn't be fire. It wouldn't be water but fire next time. It's coming every day. God's trying to open up our eyes and show us he is in charge. He is the head and not the tail. He's the beginning and the end. on praying. Keep on praying. The best thing to do is just turn the television off. Turn it away from the breaking news. That don't mean to go to the soap boppers <laughs> looking at the young and the restless, the old and the foolish. The brighter day. Search for tomorrow and you might find it next week. He don't want you looking at that. Look at God's word. Read God's word. God's word is true. It will never change. God don't lie. But every time you turn the television on, it's lying. And they even get to fighting almost about who can tell the biggest lie. <laughs> lie after lie. Whenever you see something and you hear it, can you still call it a lie if you know it's not a lie? But you got people that looks and know that it's lying and still lie for that lie. Dad told us when you come along, said, boy, don't never start telling a lie because you tell one lie. You're going to tell another lie to cover up that lie. And it's going to keep on going until your lies run out. God is going to fix it. God's going to fix it. I sing a song. I'm not going to sing it. By Joe Lagan. If Jesus can't fix it, nobody can. And then his last song that I think Joe did was, I've got one thing that you can't take it away. You might kill this old body and bury it in a cold grave. But I've got one thing that you can't take it away. And that's Jesus. That's Jesus' love. For he loves all of us. Not one of us. When it rained, it rained on the just as well as the unjust. I'm telling you, keep praying. God's going to fix it. If you don't remember nothing else that I said today, time, time, everything we deal with, time.
time is involved. Time's going to come and get us. He said, it may, you may not know the minute nor the hour that the Son of Man come. But he said, he's going to come. And he's not going to take nobody but the one that he calls. You can't wait. Get your house in order. Because tomorrow might be late. Might be too late. Get your house. You can't say, Lord, we'll wait. Can you wait five minutes? And I've got somebody that I like to bring with me. And then it turns to be an hour. You know how people tell you to wait, and you wait. I drove a school bus, and they would stick the thing out of the one minute. Then they go back in the thing would go back in the door. Then after a while, it's two minutes. I'm sitting on the bus. I had a certain time that I had to pick the kids up. Then the third thing would come out. And when the third panel came out, I said, ooh. <laughs> then they had a nerve to call to the office. Call to the office. The bus haven't been by here. I have been by there and way over picking a third kid up. Then they got a nerve to call me and tell me, can you come back? I said, I'll go back in the morning if God give me the will. <laughs> it's sad the way things is. And they got so bad, I tell them, I said, well, i tell you what. When I pull up at this house, I'm going to call you. The office. I'm here now. You hear? Yeah. Have anybody come out? No. I said, no, I see one thing. They said, how many things you see later? I said, I see two. <laughs> said, Mr. Rudd, you go ahead. It's sad the way things are going. People, there's no sense in it. Tell the truth. Then you can feel better. People can't rest at night. Oh, I couldn't rest last night. They're trying to keep up with everybody else's business. <laughs> Mind your own business. It's, it's a job doing that. Song said it takes six months to mind your own business. And it says sweep around your own door before you try to sweep around somebody else. But it, it's sad. I, I pray. I pray. The song said I pray that we'll all be ready at God's return. That's about all that I have. And I pray that you all enjoyed a little something that I've said. Because I try to tell the truth. Try to tell it like it is. It's the way, it's the way that I was brought up. And I can't turn around. I come too far to turn around. I'm looking straight ahead for the high calling. And that's Christ Jesus. You all pray for me. Fathers, again I come thanking you for the word that you gave me that I have given to these, your people. I pray right now, Father, that it will be they will instill it within their hearts, within their minds. And I pray also for the little children, not the little ones, but the teenagers that are here, that they can understand some of the things that I have said. Go with me now, Father, again, bless, and I shall be blessed. For it's in no other name than your Son, Jesus Christ's name, I 